Hello everyone, welcome to another video. My name is Knox Nathan. So, quick little update. What I'm gonna do with this channel is I wanna continue making Salesforce videos, continue making Encino videos, but I also wanna branch out into different fields. Um, I do have an IT background, so I do want to make more videos in different aspects. Currently, current agenda is that I'm working on a 301 commercial um, for Encino, a full course on Udemy, so once I finish that, I'll focus a little bit more on making videos on, on this channel. The next thing is that I'm gonna focus on ChatGPT, a few videos on ChatGPT and how I utilize ChatGPT daily, as well as in uh, my daily career as well. So if you have any suggestions or if you have any new technologies, I'm always um, willing to learn and I love to challenge myself to, to learn as much as I can. So I hope you enjoyed this little update. Um, I hope you like the intro or in the outro. I'm trying to just get uh, a lot more um, focus on this channel and hit the goal of a thousand subscribers. So it's free. If you can hit that like button, subscribe button, you know, that helps out as well. So I hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you. So today I wanted to talk about the user access policy and the field level security on permission sets. The reason why I want to talk about this video is that this is a feature that's coming very soon. And I feel like that's very important and very useful when it comes to production, right? So let's see, let's talk about user access policy. With user access policy, you could set single operations. So you can have triggers of create, update, and remove access. So you can remove permission sets when a user is deactivated and vice versa. When a user is activated, you can assign that permission set, package, license. So it just allows the user creation to be a lot more smooth and a lot more contained. So Currently, I use a record trigger flow to assign managed package. But if I could utilize a native, just a Salesforce, like without having to do any automation, that works. So the user access policy is a great feature and I'm gonna link this article below. So the next thing I wanna talk about is the field level permission sets. And for that, I need to be in an instance. The way to activate field level permission sets and the user access policy is you have to go to setup. So you're gonna type in user and then manage settings. As you can see, I already have user access policy already populated. But if you scroll down, you'll see field level security permission sets during field creation. So it's pretty straightforward, but I wanna explain a little bit deeper on that. And you also have user access policy. You wanna enable both of these tabs. So let's read the little descriptions below. Set field level security for permission sets when creating or editing custom fields. When this option is enabled, you can configure access to the new fields for permission sets instead of profiles. What Salesforce is trying to do eventually is transition to permission sets. Permission sets are so simple, and I would much rather use permission set groups, especially when I'm onboarding uh, a bunch of associates. Then you have user access policy, which automates and migrates user assignments to manage packages, which I'm very excited about, permission sets, and other access mechanics based on criteria that you set. So. Both of those are enabled. I already created a permission set, but you can utilize a new permission set if you like. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create one with you. So we'll go ahead and create, let's call this sales orders. Actually, let's just call this sales, that's it. Just sales. And we're gonna do Salesforce platform. Click save. And then for there, we're gonna go to object. And let's go ahead and search for accounts. So the way that this is triggered is that it's based on create, read, create, edit, or delete. So as long as that permission set has access to that object, if any of those permissions, you'll be able to see it upon creating custom fields. So for example, we're gonna use the account object. We're gonna click edit. We wanna be able to view it. So we'll put available on tabs, read, create, edit, and delete. So after this permission set is populated with permissions, right? We're gonna go ahead and go to object manager and go to accounts. And then from here, we're gonna create a new field and we'll create a number field. And we'll call this field, whatever you wanna call it. Let's just call it, uh, let's just call it quality. I'm just gonna call it quality. It doesn't really matter, this is just for practice, right? So click next. And this is where we get the new step. Establish field level security. This list includes permission sets that have create, 
read, edit, delete access for this field object. So like I mentioned, any object that has that with that permission set. So that permission set sales permission set could have also had access to cases. And then I would have been able to see that. So let's go ahead and test that out. We're going to go back to account, go home, go to permissions. We'll go to sales, the sales permission set. We'll go to object. Then we'll go ahead and search for case. Oh, can't find it. Oh, this is a platform. This is a Salesforce platform. So my apologies. It would not be able to see that. So let's just call, let's just put assets for in this example, right? We want, let's say we need to see access and, um, and assets, enable tabs, read only, create, edit, boom. Now we'll go back to here and we'll just go previous. We might have to just create a new one just cause we might not be able to populate it. So let's just do that again. I think it's just best to be able to see a lot of examples, um, depending on how you learn. So I'll click number and then we'll do quality again. Click next. And you should be able to see, sorry, this is on the count object. So it makes sense. So we'll click edit. So now on the count object, we should only see because we have read edit access on that. Now, if we go to assets, right, we'll go to asset fields. We'll do the same field, right? We'll go to number, click next, quality, click next. There we go. So now we can see that we have read access and edit access now with a new custom field. So because we gave that permission set sales access to account and access to assets, now when we add a new field on either account or access, we're now able to see this, this new step. So it's pretty straightforward. And now I'm gonna talk about user access policy. About user access policy. This is a great feature that Salesforce has released. Um, I'm very excited for this feature. I can't wait for it to, to come into production. So um, we're gonna go ahead and create a new one. And specifically, this is gonna be for the sales associates that are Salesforce platform, which realistically in reality, sales associates would not be in Salesforce platform because they need to utilize opportunities. So we're gonna just call this sales and then we'll keep the API sales as well. So this trigger type is very important. So you wanna know when you will you trigger this, when it's created, when it's updated, created or updated. We're gonna go ahead and create, create. Then you have the status over here, design. So right now we're designing our user access policy. Then we can change it to testing, migrate, updating, failed, active, and complete. The good thing about the status is that you can create a workflow, right? You can go through a workflow in Sandbox and be able to bring uh, user, uh, bring other admins to be making sure that this policy is triggered. In this example, I'm just gonna put design because it doesn't make sense to make it active yet. We'll go ahead and click save. And then from there, we have these fields, field sets, uh, actable users, additional user field filters, actions, and re recent user access change. So we'll click edit. And then from here, we're gonna select um, applicable users. So what this means is that you're wanting to know when when will we when will this be triggered? Is it a row? Is it you know a specific um, profile? Is it the package license? So anybody that has a managed package license of let's say DocuSign, they'll be assigned this permission. So you can filter it the way you want to filter it. In this example, I'm just going to put row equals CEO. Click insert. So whenever a user is created and their role equals CEO, they will get this permission. And then you have additional user field filters, active, department, division, email, first name, last name, nickname, and title. And in this example, I'm not gonna do anything on this one, but to each his own. Then the action. So what are we gonna do? We're gonna grant. I'm gonna grant a permission set, and we're gonna call this permission set sales. So in this example, this user is gonna be have access to account as well as assets. We'll go ahead and click save. And then from here, we're just gonna go to users and click new. If you do not have a, a license, go ahead and create a new one on Trailhead just so you can be able to practice this. But I'm gonna come back and fill up some of this information and then I'll show you exactly what happens.
One thing I forgot to mention is that we're still in design status. So this will not be able to work unless it's inactive. So we're gonna go ahead and click edit and we're gonna change the status just in this scenario um, because this is a trailhead. So we can click active and then we'll go ahead and create the user. So I'll come back when I create the user. I created uh, Sophia Brooks and it works so well. So if we scroll down right there and then we have our sales permission set assignment. This is such a great feature that Salesforce is releasing. So essentially you can manipulate the user access policy as much as you can and make it work well for you. So I hope that this video was informative and also I hope that you do utilize this feature and I hope this saves you a lot more time on onboarding. Thank you so much. See you in the next video. Hey,